What's up, y'all? Got a banger from Peas World. Let's get straight into it. So the trending thing is is for you. Are we? Do you start at the root? Where Where do you start? Do it. Because aren't we supposed to be doing what What's trending? So here we go. Don't do it. Get the hell out of here with that dumb <laughs> show. <laughs> I love it. Since I told the internet that I'm voting for Trump, I've had so many people message me telling me to myself, body shaming me because I'm pregnant, saying that they Ooh. hope my baby dies, etc. Hoping That's that I so evil. Why would you wish that on somebody? Being pregnant is one of the most beautiful things out there, man. Get graped, hoping that if I have a daughter, she gets graped. And I hope you all know that you are the reason why I voted for Trump. I have some left-leaning views, but part of the reason that I have swung so far right is because how can I trust a party or a people that say that they stand for love, equality, treating people fairly, yet they go out and treat others exactly the opposite of what they say they advocate for? Dude, so true. I've seen so many people just on my social media, and so even some of my close friends, like talking about a lot of violent things. I'm going to keep it a buck. No matter who won, the last thing I was going to do is talk about doing any act of violence. It is it, it is what it is. You either win or you lose, man. It happens. If you think that you can make progress or earn votes or encourage people to vote blue, but you're on this app telling people to themselves because they have a differing opinion than you do, it will never work. Yeah. The average working class American who is voting in an election does not care about your social media virtue signaling justice warrior post you can post as many infographics as you want on social media but at the end of the day if you're a horrible person nobody is going to agree with what you have to say and i think that the distress that has been caused after this election also just goes to show how much propaganda that the left has fed their supporters you guys are believing literal lies the world is not ending. Things are actually going to get better. And that's why so many Americans voted for Trump. Because we're so... I just hope that eggs ain't $9. <laughs> I'm just hoping eggs are just a little bit cheaper in milk. Because cats like cereal and I be eating them eggs like crazy. I'm tired of you guys lying and being hateful and trying to say that you stand for something but completely acting the opposite way. We're tired of you and that's why we voted for Trump. What did I say? Wow, at least she stood up for it. I know the dating scene sucks, but so does getting hurt in an accident. Have you ever found yourself involved in a personal injury case? As an image consultant, I meet a lot of clients who are actually recovering from all sorts of injuries, from car accidents to workplace injuries. And I was actually surprised to see at how many people lose their personal injury cases, which is why I want to talk about Morgan and Morgan, America's largest injury law firm. They specialize in a wide variety of personal injury cases, and they've won thousands of big cases. And if you do end up working with them, they're going to fight for the money that you deserve. Just recently, Morgan & Morgan solidified verdicts in Florida for $12 million and $26 million in Philly. That's up to 40 times the highest insurance offer. And I'm telling you, your case could be worth millions. And the best part is, it's all free unless you win your case. Now, if you've also been the victim of a personal injury or a serious accident, you can visit www.forthepeople.com slash Levi, found in the description below, where you can start your free claim today. Brainwashed. Bitchy. Bitter. And now bald? I think I finally understand the 4B movement. <laughs> This so-called 4B movement going on in the States at the moment is actually beyond disrespectful to women. I'll say this, you are allowed to not be happy with the results of the American election. Thanks. If you want to go online and say fuck Trump and all of that, fine. Yeah. Whether people agree with you, disagree with you, doesn't really matter, but that's an opinion you're entitled to have. But going online, shaving your heads so that way men will have nothing to do with you. Their words, by the way. On one video I saw of a woman doing it, so that way men will just have nothing to do with her and she will repel men is so beyond disrespectful and rude to women who have alopecia and are going through chemo treatment at the moment i can't even begin to put into words it's not how feminists operate yeah yeah, yeah that's not yeah they don't operate off of uh logic there but what's funny is that they're doing this they're shaving their heads and they're they're self-canceling themselves they're destroying their own movement in live time it's um it's awfully hilarious that do any of these women who are doing this realize actually how privileged they are in life 
claiming you have no rights or you're losing your rights while you set up your phone most likely your iphone which will be costing at least a grand in a tripod making sure you get the perfect lighting to then get a shaver or some scissors or whatever film yourself shaving or cut chopping off all your hair and then posting it on social media to prove a point the actual 4B movement going on in South Korea, frankly, this makes a mockery of it. And claiming to have no right, I'm sorry, it's an absolute mockery. I've always said I'm a feminist, but a traditional feminist, but I just want equal rights. This new wave of feminism to me is absolute bullshit. I'm sorry, it's, this has really ticked me off. Because I just feel so, so sorry for any woman who has alopecia or going through cancer treatment or anything else any other reason why she just doesn't have her hair and you have all these other women saying i'm going doing this so that way men will have nothing to do with me they'll hate the way i look they think i'm disgusting you know realize how disrespectful you're being to actual women and saying you don't have any rights there are actual countries in this world where women really have no rights exactly the legal age of consent in iraq is being lowered to nine Oof. in afghanistan women aren't even allowed to speak in public have no access to education aren't allowed to show their faces their hair or anything not a choice they're not allowed they can't drive like i mean literally have no rights at all all because you disagree with what the majority of americans had voted for and this is what you do claiming you have no rights as I said, you are entitled to not like the election results. No one's going to say you're not. But the amount of privilege coming from the, the videos on TikTok with these women doing it is just frankly disgusting. And so they're saying you have no rights. Really? I'd ask any woman who's taken part in this 4B movement to actually go over to Afghanistan, to go over to experience what the women in South Korea are living through to go to iraq with the legal age of consent is going to be lowered to nine then please tell us what rights those women have because clearly they're so privileged i gone to you i hate trump as well by the way i hate kamala i think they both suck but one thing i'd never ever what did south park say it's the different uh, it's, you have to choose between a, a giant douche and a turd sandwich <laughs> <laughs> do is try and make myself seem repulsive and horrific and so-called ugly by shaving my head and essentially making a mockery of thousands if not millions of women who have sadly lost their hair for numerous reasons truly disgusting look I'm i mean she's got a really good point and shout out to her for uh, you know exposing the hypocrisy like there are women out there suffering from alopecia and suffering from cancer that they do have to shave their heads and to insinuate that having a shaved head means you're repulsive to men so disrespectful to those women who are actually going through something that's like that's that, i wouldn't wish that on my worst enemy going through what those women go through or a man even but it's just funny that it's imploding. Like, they're doing this to try to, like, stand for something, but actually canceling themselves by shaving their own heads. It's ridiculous. What kind of rights do you feel like women don't have in America? Oh, wow. Um... And, and another thing to that girl's point. Ladies, if you really think that life is really hard here, go to Afghanistan. Go to Iraq. You, you really want to see what it's like? Go to Afghanistan for a month where women have no rights at all. You can't drive. I'm pretty sure you can't drive. Don't quote me. You can't drive. You can't own anything. You have to be married. You have to be covered up at all times. Go over there and then and then come back over here. You're going to be so privileged. And what's the quote? Is it, I think it's, privilege is blind to those who have it. Like we're so, we have so much privilege that we forget how good life is. Um, uh, what do you think? Gosh, that's such a good question. I guess it's not necessarily right, but there's not enough female representation in politics. Yeah. That, that is a good question. You know, I think women should have the right to feel safe. We deserve a government that supports us. You're in a public place with you and one of your girlies with your little latte. Do you not feel safe? Like, I, I don't know. I feel like if you didn't feel safe, you'd be wearing body armor or something. The right to feel safe. So it's not about rights. It's about feelings. I mean, he's got a point. Korean women have no idea what the Forby movement is, and we need to stop this misinformation. Okay, so thank you to my friend Annie for making that video because I am a Korean woman currently living in Korea and I have so much to say about this topic. So most of the 4B movement videos that I've seen on TikTok are made from foreigners and I think Korean Americans or just Asian people living in the West but not actually people living in Korea. So like I said, I live in Seoul. What I think is happening is the Western media likes to really pick up on these sensationalist 
provocative topics and then makes it into an article and then everyone on TikTok follows suit and makes videos about it. But let me tell you, I, I am 29, going to turn 30 this year and literally all the conversations that I have with my friends around my age is about, oh my God, we we're looking to get married, we need to find good partners and we need to do this before it gets too late or we're just like aged out of their marriage market, you know? And I just made a YouTube video about this, Korea's population crisis, why nobody's getting married or having babies. But I also explained there are services in Korea like marriage matchmaking services where people go and you pay a broker and you submit all this information about yourself, your income, your assets, your family background. Wait, I think I've seen this clip. If you have any debt, like which university, you know how you know how beneficial it would be if we had a marriage matchmaking service like that that took all of your assets, the level of education you have, your personality, and like matched you with a man. That would be great. I feel like that'd be fantastic. But matchmaking services now are are awful. <laughs> you you guys have probably seen that show Millionaire Matchmaker or stuff like that. Like people are just looking for the wrong things most of the time, and even these matchmakers aren't even good. Bro, y'all should have been started the 4B movement. <laughs> celibacy the wave, you know what I mean? <laughs> He said celibacy the wave. You better sell a bit of that. You better sell a bit of that to somebody who cares. Anything to uh reduce the thoughtfulness. You know what I mean? The thoughtfulness, you know what I mean? <laughs> the thought pockets. Parliament is on the well, I think if the 4B movement actually curbs the rise of promiscuity, we'll have more relationships, more children, more nuclear families, and we'll be more successful as a as a culture and as a society. But the more the more promiscuous women are, the more they do OF and they're, they don't want to have kids and they're more money hungry. They're not getting into relationships for like actual love. So I don't know. I think it could be a good thing. The verge of passing a law that would allow girls as young as nine years old oh, to be married. This, is this includes allowing parents to arrange marriages for their young daughters. Chat, what do you guys think about arranged marriages? Uh, personally, I think they should be adults before you arrange a marriage. This is oof. Social activists, Sunni religious leaders, and women's rights groups who oppose no. the proposed amendments have organized protests to denounce the government's efforts as an attempt to legalize child rape. Oof. If passed, this law would put most, if not all, decision-making power over family matters in the hands of clerics who could disregard human rights and social repercussions. Child marriage can lead to unhealthy sexual relations, including unwanted and forced sex violence, according to a UNFPA report on child marriages in the Kurdistan region of Iraq. The proposed legal change would also remove critical protections for divorced women and would strip protections regarding inheritance and child custody. The Iraqi parliament, driven by a conservative Shia Muslim coalition, would amend the nation's personal status law, which was established in 1959 and has been considered a progressive safeguard for families. According to UNICEF, 28% of girls in Iraq are currently married before the current legal age, which is 18. Oh if the proposed amendment passes, young Iraqi girls could face early early pregnancies and related delivery risks, as well as even scarcer chances of education and economic well-being, according to Hiba Abdul Wahab, executive director of the Middle Eastern Women's Organization. She says the proposed amendment also risks legalizing temporary marriage contracts conducted by religious clerics known as pleasure marriages. Oh. This practice enables men to enter marital relations with an unlimited number of women for as short as just a few hours or as long as just a few months. What? Bro, I don't know. I think that's awful. There's no way we should... And I've talked about this before, man. When you start looping kids into stuff is when I start I start really disagreeing, man. There's one thing that you should never disturb, and it's the innocence of a child. So that, that irks me. That's crazy. God, that's nuts. It's for women who are saying that women in America are not oppressed and specific... I like her jacket. I don't know what that is, but I would rock that white Republican women who are getting on this app and saying that, oh, American women are just whining, they're not oppressed, they don't have it bad, just tells me that they are not very intelligent. And I'm not saying that to be rude, I'm saying that to be clear. Saying that American women are comparing themselves to women in other countries and other demographics is wildly misleading because American women are not saying that we have it worse than others. We are saying that we have it worse than the generations before us in our own country, which is a warning sign to slip into even more oppression. Women oppressed anywhere is women oppressed everywhere. What? Huh? 
Wait, let me let me just before I get upset, let me just where and I think what those types of women fail to recognize is that radical shifts do not change overnight. We slowly and silently get our rights stripped away and then get the finger pointed in our face saying it's not a big deal, you don't have any rights slipping away. If a woman in the 1970s was more free than I am in 2024, that is telling me that we are going in the opposite direction of liberation. And it you know what? Let's do a quick Google search. You know I like to do these Google searches. Do women, do modern women have more rights than women in the 19, uh, I can't, sp I can't push seven because it changes scenes. Yes, compared to the women in the 19, <sighs> yes, compared to the women in the 1970s, modern women generally have more legal rights and opportunities. Due to significant advancements in women's rights movements, including greater access to education, employment, reproductive health care, and pr uh, protection against discrimination in the workplace, making their overall legal standing considerably stronger today. So, what are you talking about? Stupid. What are you even talking about? Uh, just one quick Google search. She's calling us low IQ. <laughs> Bro, what? Stop the cap. It will require resistance to keep that from going in the wrong direction. What rights? That's what I'm saying. What rights are we talking about? I just did a quick Google search, and it seems like you guys have more rights now than you ever have. But this victim mentality, bruv, it's running so rampant. So this woman was trolling the 4B movement, right? Clearly. She, she made a TikTok Makes post. Makes me want to have another baby. <laughs> for a second because i know a lot of you guys aren't going to actually listen to black people they have shared the sentiment but i'll go ahead and share it myself white women literally think that their voices are central to our experiences they why would you ever speak for someone else the, the oh my god that is wild to me i would never speak for Cass. i would never speak i would never speak for my own mom why is it that it's mostly white women that want to speak for other people? Well, let me speak for you. No, let them speak. Let anybody speak for themselves. What is this? They think that black women's voices are secondary to theirs, especially. Mm, well, according to you feminists, women's history is women's history. So like what, what what's even the, what's the difference between a white so much self-awareness you are stuck in your progressive woke bubble that you guys actually dehumanize black people very clearly and you don't even see it humanizing someone literally means that you afford them the full spectrum of human emotion and capability sanctification does not equal humanizing black people are flawed we are capable of being problematic, reinforcing white supremacy, and being xenophobic, as we are blatantly seeing on this app at this very moment. But surprise, we have white women like this creator making excuses. <laughs> she did a white rabbit. For it. Just for the simple fact that we're black and she's trying to get her cookies and her brownie points for being woke. And last time I checked, liberation does not come at the expense of sacrificing another group of people for another group's comfort. Like, y'all are literally not feminists. How are you feminists when you're excusing anti-Arab racism and xenophobia from black women? And the funniest thing is that she goes out of her way to actually point out that she personally does not agree with the comments of people saying they're going back to Starbucks. And she's doing this because she knows that it looks bad. That this type of narrative will actually ruin her reputation if she actually aligns herself with it. So you guys are battling to see who's the best feminist? I mean, damn. What is even going Can on? Can we not all just get along? And so what does she do? And she chooses to stay silent and hold no one accountable for it. This is peak white feminism because a lot of white feminists don't actually do things because it's the right thing to do. Optics are a lot more important for them. She's talking about how much she cares about the black community, how people never show up for black women while she watches all of these black people and all these black women literally ruin their reputation. These women will literally yasqueen you into destroying yourself, your image, and your reputation. They will stand back and watch it happen. And it's because they don't actually care. These types of people, they view blackness in relation to themselves and how having black friends, advocating for black women, how it makes them look because they don't actually care about the status of black women. It's literally all for show. Although I agree with what- I mean, there's a lot of things I'm not educated on and one of those is that. I just know that, you know, Cass is, Cass is half black. I'm in an interracial relationship. And does it have its own kind of, I guess, hardships? But I feel like nowadays when we walk around, like nobody really gives us any flack. If anything, we get a lot of compliments. 
we'd like to dress well we like to go out not go out to the club or anything like that but you know we like to go do our thing go go get brunch and people call us a cute couple most of the time and i've always been even even as a kid i've always wanted like someone that could bring new experiences new experiences to my life and with Cass, it was like it was so much different than what i was used to i was raised poor white just in a really poor neighborhood, you know, like, and those are the people I hung out with because that's where I lived. It's what it was. Once I got into college, once I got to high school, like, I just met more people. I played sports, you know, I played music in college. And I just, when I met Cass, I just really vibed with her. It wasn't even about her skin color. It was about her as a person, her morals, her ethics, how she stood as a woman, like, her standards, how, and now how good she, now she's beautiful. Don't Don't get that twisted, but it was a lot, it was more skin deep than just superficially what she looked like. I fell in love with the person she was. And I always talk about this. There's three things that men look for. Appearance gets our attention. Personality keeps our attention. And your character is what makes us fall in love with you. Cass had a fantastic personality. She, she was hilarious and she had really good characters. That's what made me fall in love with her. Like, yeah, she was hot. But, you know, at the end of the day, there's a lot of hot women out there. But if you don't find a chick that you can actually vibe with and have a good conversation with who can like stimulate your brain, I feel like it's really hard to find like a good relationship with a woman, especially one that's going to last because you're going to get bored. You guys have probably got with a dumb chick before. Stupid. I used to say the first thing I look for in a woman is intelligence because if she doesn't have that, then she's mine. <laughs> <laughs> that's an awful way to look at it, but you know. Dumb girls are the easy ones because you don't have to try as hard. But like with a smart girl, you actually have to show up. You have to be witty. You have to be smart. You have to be emotionally stable, emotionally intelligent. So those are my two cents. But I hope you guys enjoyed today's episode. Loki, did you have a good time? Are you tired or something? It, you act like you pay bills around here, bro. But I hope you guys enjoyed today's episode. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. Go cop the ebook. The Four Pillars of Personality makes you irresistible to women and respected by men. And the Four Steps to Style ebook that makes you irresistible to women and respected by men. But I'll see you guys tomorrow, man. Peace.